Hey guys, so why would you want to turn your art into a seamless pattern? Any clue? Well, what if you wanted to print your artwork onto products? So then you would need a seamless pattern, right? In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the tips and techniques that I've used in Photoshop to turn my art into a seamless pattern to get printed onto products. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Hey guys, so let's get started. After you decide which painting that you want to turn into an abstract seamless pattern, we can either take a photo of our painting or we can use a scanner to scan in our painting and then once you have JPEG or a copy of an image of your painting, we'll go ahead and open it into Photoshop. I'm going to use one of my watercolor abstract paintings that I painted a while ago. So in order to create a seamless pattern of our abstract painting, all we need to do is to create a square image. Let's go ahead and crop this image into a square. So if you're in Photoshop, this is the crop tool right here. And what we can do is we can click on the ratio and we'll go to square. Let's choose an area that we want to crop. And then you can move this down here so that we don't get the sides. And I'll show you this whole process. I promise it's going to be easy. Once you're happy with the area that you want to turn into a seamless pattern, let's go ahead and crop it. And then what we're actually going to do is we can change the brightness and the contrast of this image if you want to. So we can go to image adjustments. We'll go to brightness. Okay, so brightness, we can bump it up just a little bit and then contrast. If you want some areas to be a little bit darker, once you're happy, click OK. For pattern making, to create a seamless repeat pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. And we can either do it 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel square or 2500 by 2500. Let's do 2500 and this is just for the pattern repeat tile. So let's go ahead and create that and then we can drag our image that we cropped into here and let's go ahead and do command T and go ahead and drag the corner. So here's our pattern. Okay, so once we have our image in this new file, what we're actually going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer just in case we mess up or we don't like it. We still have a copy of what we wanted to edit. Let's go ahead and turn off the bottom one. And so what we'll do now is we're going to apply a filter. So we'll go to filter, other, offset, and then make sure it's half of what you created. So if you created 2000 by 2000, it's going to be 1000 and 1000. But since I created a 2500 pixels, by 2500 pixel square, it's going to be 1250. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And so what this actually did is it made this artwork into a seamless pattern. So it took all of the edges and lined it up. So the only part that we actually have to edit is the middle section that goes horizontally across and vertically. So we actually just have to fix this areas here if we were to test this pattern out so let's just do a quick test we'll go to edit define pattern click ok and then we'll create a new document so something that's a little bit bigger so 29 inches by 29 inches and then we'll double click this and then double click again and we'll apply a pattern overlay we'll go to the very bottom once we take a look at this and we scale it down this pattern does repeat the only thing that we have to fix are these edges right here going across and vertically so that they match. And what we can actually do right now is to go ahead and go back to our original tile, which is this one. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. I like to duplicate the layers just so that I can backtrack 
my steps in case I mess up. So now what we want to do is in order to recreate this as a seamless repeat pattern, what we have to do is to somehow blend these edges together so that we get something that's seamless and repeating. There's a couple of different ways that we can actually do this and we can take the clone stamp tool. What this does is it takes a copy of your image and then you can paint it into other areas that you pretty much want to copy and stamp. For example, we're going to hold down Alt or Option on our keyboard until you see this uh, circular icon and then we're going to copy the area. So let's copy the area that you want to repeat. Let's say we want to repeat this area. So let me just zoom this in just a little bit. This area right here I want to copy. So let's go ahead and press Alt and then click to copy and then you see how it's kind of mirroring that side. So what we can do is we can decrease the size of the brush and then and we'll go ahead and click here. So that's not what I intended. What I actually want to do is let's go ahead and pick a brush. You should have general brushes that come with Photoshop and if not feel free to use any of the brushes that you want. I have a couple of different brushes here that I like to use. In this case it's the Ultimate Watercolor Soft. If you have a subscription to Photoshop you should be able to get a hold of Kyle's brushes. It's the Mega Pack. So I typically just use any of the default brushes that come with Photoshop. So in this case I'm going to go with Soft Round pressure opacity do is we'll press alt or option on our keyboard and then you could use the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size of the brush so what we'll do is we'll hold down alt or option key on our keyboard and then click to copy that area and then we'll go ahead and paint it to where we want the edges to seamlessly flow together. So I know it. this is gonna be rough doing this little by little. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can keep copying with the clone stamp tool or you can use the lasso tool to copy different parts of the painting. So like if you wanted to copy this part, I would do Command C to copy and then Command V and then it'll paste it on a separate layer and you can actually drag this down here so we can flip this vertically there's a couple of different things that we can do with this and then we can add a mask as some of the steps that i take to do this and then once i add a mask you can toggle between the x on your keyboard and then you can choose a brush that you want to use and you could just lightly delete or erase some of the pieces that you want to blend in. This is a good way to blend the different edges of your abstract painting. So this is kind of like a, some of my secrets that I use. And then this too, we can, we can delete some parts of this. So it's actually not too bad, right? So if you zoom out a little bit, Okay, so another thing you can do is if I wanted to finish this edge right here, it's so weird talking through this process. This is something that I just do automatically. Let's copy this part right here and then do Command V and what it does, it pastes it on a different layer. And so what we'll do is Command click or Control click and then we'll flip horizontal and we can take it in over here and figure out how we can actually blend this together and we can do it for different parts of our actual pattern. So those are some of the steps that I actually take to create this into a seamless pattern. I'll copy different parts, actually copy some bigger pieces so that it looks like it blends together. And I would recommend creating new layers as well, just so that in case you don't like a piece, then you can just delete it, right? And so I think what would make sense is if I took the rectangular marquee tool, I'll actually copy this part right here. So we'll do Command C and then we'll do Command V and then make sure you're on the actual layer that you want to copy from. So we'll do Command C and then Command V to paste. And now since we copied this area here, we can flip it. 
and then take the move tool by pressing V on your keyboard. And so now we can seamlessly integrate this into our painting and we can even flip it if you think that might be better. So let's go ahead and flip it and then resize this. So these are just some ideas to get you thinking about how you can blend your painting together. On this one, I would probably add a layer mask, then press B for the brush tool. And then I just start deleting some of these areas, the edges of those layers, just so that it can start blending together. So if you zoom in, I wanna take you through this so you can see what I'm doing here. So I just start deleting some of these areas. And again, with um, these brushes, you can change the opacity. So this is at 100% right now. So if we went down to 41, it wouldn't erase as much. So you could see the sh edges are a little bit sharper. So you can experiment with cutting different parts of this painting and kind of putting the puzzle pieces together to see where they would match. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to speed up this painting so you can see what I've done here. All right, so I'm gonna stop right here and kind of give you a play-by-play -play of what I did. My strategy is always fill the biggest shapes first. So the reason I copied certain areas is so that I can start filling in where the lines meet and the edges meet so that when you repeat this, you won't see it again. Let's test this pattern so you can understand what I mean by this. What we'll do is is we'll go ahead and flatten this out and as you actually or merge the layers is what I meant to say so as you continually figure out what it is that you like you can go ahead and start merging some of these layers down and so I think this looks good but I'm gonna wait to merge this actual layer down later so let's go ahead and edit this area right here and so the easiest fix for me would be to actually copy this area right here and then we'll just flip it. So we'll do Command C. So let's make sure we're on the actual layer that we want to copy. So we'll do Command C and then Command V. We'll go ahead and flip this vertical and then now we can drag it down to kind of mirror that part and you can see here the edges it might turn out funky on this side, so we'll have to do the same where we copy this area uh, just so that it, it won't look weird right here. Let's just zoom in just a little bit. Okay, now what we can do is we can add another layer mask and we'll press B for the brush. Go ahead and delete some parts of this just so that it can blend into the painting. So this is actually how you can blend things together. And the reason why we're blending is so that, you know, everything else outside of this, so the outer edges of this whole entire pattern is going to repeat seamlessly. It's just the middle part that we cut the image into fours that's making it look like it's not seamless. Other than the middle part, like this section here, we'll be able to seamlessly repeat this pattern once we fix everything here around the edges. We have a couple of options. Do we like this side better than this side? I'm trying to figure out, you know, you can actually paint in to recreate that or you can use a stamp tool so let's try the stamp tool so let's say if we wanted to go ahead and repeat this parts okay so now would it make more sense to add more white space or do we want to 
repeat this whole section or let's see so let's take the stamp tool and let's make sure we're on the layer that we actually want to edit so let's go ahead and copy the right side what we can actually do to speed up this process hit option or alt click the area that we want to copy go ahead and stamp the the edges that we're trying to hide so the goal is to make everything blend together so let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit bigger so we can get some of these spaces uh, quicker so let's go ahead and copy so I understand this is probably going to be a tedious process but once you figure out how the tools work together it's going to be fast, I promise. Right now I'm just using the clone stamp tool and I'm just copying areas. So when I turn it into this icon, I'm pressing Alt or Option on my keyboard and clicking, clicking again and painting these areas. So we'll keep doing that. And then so say you wanted to click this side and see how it looks. If I added a little bit more of the um, white space, clicking and I'm going to speed up this process too. And there you have it. So it's not quite as perfect. I know I could probably refine this more, but I wanted to use this example to show you guys where to go from here. So once you're satisfied, I actually merged all of the layers together to create one. And so now once we test this pattern out, you'll see that it'll start repeating. So let's go ahead and go to edit define pattern and we want to make sure that we save this so this is going to be our um, pattern tile okay so now in our larger document let's go ahead and double click this layer go to pattern overlay and we'll choose the new one and so now you can see how seamless it is looking at this now I would probably edit this part right here that's why we have the original pattern tile file which is the other one that we define the pattern with so we can always go back to that pattern and edit that one out and so I would probably fill this part in now that I'm seeing this but I also like the way this area right here looks so I might actually just copy that but if you like the way it's looking if you did your first pass and you're like yeah I like it make sure that you're also adjusting the scale once I make the pattern a little bit smaller you can kind of see that weird area here that I will probably go back and edit but once you're satisfied you can go ahead and click OK and then you can actually save this file out as a JPEG so this is the file that you're actually going to upload online whether you have a print on demand shop or if you're working with a printer this is the file that you're going to give them the seamless repeat pattern and then you have this pattern tile right here just in case you mess up and want to go back and keep editing this i mentioned on the other file that this part right here i wasn't really liking so much and i like this area here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the lasso tool and I am going to copy this area here and I'm going to do command C and then command V and then V for the move tool. So you can take this and reposition it to however you want and you can even decrease the size. So I think what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to do it like this so that um, the darker parts kind of match that edge. And then we'll just turn it. So it's kind of like playing a puzzle, trying to figure out where the pieces would look best. And so I'm going to apply another mask and I'm going to press B for brush. And then this is where we can erase or delete some parts of this so that it can start blending in. And then I want to go ahead and bump it up to 100% opacity. And then we could just delete the edges so that they do actually blend in together. So this is one of my secrets. I use the mask and I delete some of the pieces that I've copied from the painting. And then I start to just blend them in by deleting some of the edges here. It's not bad for a quick tutorial, right? I think anybody can take this tutorial and use the same exact tools that I've used and actually create something that is seamless. So this actually looks a lot better. And so once you've tweaked the pattern, and so let's go ahead and merge these layers. And then what we'll do is we'll go to edit, define pattern, click OK. We'll go back to our bigger document. We'll double click this and then choose pattern overlay and then choose the very newest one that we defined as a pattern. And now, I mean, it's not bad. So now it looks like it's blending a little bit more right here. I would actually make this as my final piece, but again, it's totally up to you. You decide how far you want to go into the painting. But basically, all of the tools that I've showed you in this video, they're all pretty much image editing tools to clone copy parts of the actual painting and repeating it just so that you get a seamless pattern. You don't have to recreate your painting from scratch. You can do all of these like magic things in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.